Okay, thank you so much, Chair. I noticed your remark about the time. I will do my best to fit it, but if I exceed, please give me a signal. Okay, uh, let me do my presentation like a logical con continuation of the welcome speech, uh, because I picked up some interesting remarks from presenters from welcome speeches of our colleagues, and I pick up two interesting words. Innovation and revolution was several mentioned. And uh, you see, the humankind is the permanent process of revolution. Uh, when some changes are required, uh, it means that there's already some precondition for this. So revolution in the sphere of scientific information uh, is going on since maybe the early days of the humankind. And uh, innovation, okay, innovation is the phenomena which changes its uh, nature with it, the digital air. And uh, one economist say that the money is the blood for economy, but what is the blood for innovation? The answer is simple, information. Who possesses the information owns the world, uh, some people say. And uh, if in information is blood, we have to ensure that innovation is provided with the very good blood. And uh, now, uh, assessing the reality and predicting the future, we need to understand what happened in the past. From the very beginning, the humankind was developing knowledge all the time, and being uh, developed, the knowledge required storage. And this is the rebels of first, of earliest known uh, storage of data is the Babylon Library. Uh, so, as we see not functioning facility but rebels, we may guess that something bad happened to that library. And I think something like that, which happened to the Alexandria Library in the 44th century before Christ, because of the invasion of Romans. What I mean uh, when we say about firing and destruct, destru destroying of data storage, that civilization lost its temper and was dropped back for hundreds of years and centuries. And uh, when we are saying about bad things happening to data storage, we don't only refer to the very past years, but it is going on nowadays. So uh, that one picture shows what ISIS is doing for the fire, uh, with the information storage of libraries. And uh, I drive your attention to a recent accident which happens with the Russian Academy of Science Institution for many key information, which was uh, fired and lost a lot of uh, manuscripts, really uh, original and uh, valid, valuable information. So in this regard, uh, when we say revolution, printing produced a big revolution in information dissemination, information story. Uh, after printing was uh, discovered, we get scientific magazine. Not exchange of letters between scientists, which was not duplicated, which only uh, <coughs> meant to, read, to be read by one person. Printing made, this, uh, made it possible to disseminate and made this information public. But printing was discovered and we invented uh, 500 years ago, what we have today. We have today completely new platform and there is no need just to be physically printed, and there is uh, no time required to make a copy of existing material, so it's all disseminated. And uh, recent studies show that for previous 20 years, the mankind produced the amount of information equal to the, those produced for the previous 300,000 years before. So, and this process of uh, information digital explosion is going on. And the amount of information which is circulating among us is already increasing the physical capacity of a human to access all the information. Because we don't only read papers, books, magazines, no. We receive thousands of SMS, emails, all, all the advertisement, all this uh, uh, reclama in the content. So you, you cannot even understand how much information comes to us, and with this information uh, flow, uh, the information explosion, we may easily get uh, explosion of brains. So, the question is, it needs to be discussed. This phenomena should be faced by experts, but as I said in my presentation, the objective of the, our organization is 
discuss with communities, with experts, what to do. But if you only discuss, people say it sometimes blah, blah, we need to do things. And this is our invitation. We invite you to discuss and do with us what is about, what, what can we do about this phenomenon. So each nation, including the smallest one, has contributed to the global collection of wisdom, and it should be exposed and respected there. So why we say smallest nation? From the smallest piece of information, uh, we have data collection. When data collection is stored and sorted, it makes information. Uh, when information is analyzed, it produces knowledge, and pieces of knowledge may uh, create wisdom, of uh, global wisdom. So one piece of data as a big contribution to the global knowledge. So uh, now I am coming directly to the uh, platform iScience for All, which uh, our organization is developing and promoting. Uh, normally, the presentation is quite long. I'm not going to take much of your time. This presentation will be available and uh, uploaded, and I would like you, who is interested, uh, to discover all slides in the text because uh, this presentation is not intended for just oral presentation with the audience. This is detailed description of the intention, challenges, what we do, what we would like to achieve, and it requires analysis by the specialists. So, uh, rest of 26 slides, which is still in my presentation, I will briefly introduce but not discuss in the detail. I invite you first to read then to react and maybe address us directly or through uh, Ms. Kair or through the Department of Science and Technology uh, with some proposal, what, how you see your personal contribution, your institutional contribution. Maybe there is some um, counter arguments which you say this is not right, I suggest. So we invite for discussion and we invite for uh, common action. But there are ch challenges for STI uh, area because there is no homogeneous environment in this. So everybody is producing knowledge in its own format, in its own requirement. It's all diverse from nations to nations, even from company to company, from whatever, from the repository to repository, it's not homogeneous. Uh, so <clears throat> when you look for necessary information, you hardly find unless you use specialized tools. But you may agree there are not so many specialized tools for scientists, et cetera, et cetera. So this is not, uh, STI stakeholders, they have similar issue, uh, because for the moment, the level of digitalization is quite low. Uh, le let me just simply um, give you a chance to have your own view. And uh, after omitting some text, I would like to introduce you to the general scheme. So, We discovered <coughs> seven categories of potential user of uh, scientific information. Uh, first, authors who de develop knowledge and who are really, uh, which uh, includes scientists, institutions, those who do. Second category of uh, operators are repositories, those who are storing developed knowledge and make it disseminated for wider audience. What they require, what they need, each category uh, has certain requirements we try to identify and every contribution from this side maybe to extension of this list of uh, problems for each category are highly welcomed. Uh, what uh, public authorities are requiring from scientific information? They require maybe ranking, metrics, because they need uh, to make a decision, fund or not to fund. The most available metrics today is scientometrics is widely used, but at the same time is widely criticized because citation is not only the level in which the contribution of particular scientists to the developer in this area uh, could be cited. So we invite everybody to produce more powerful analysis, but 
good analysis requires good information base. So if you have only one unit, so you can only have 100% because there is no alternative. If you have two units, it's 50 to 50. So the more you have, the, the more precise your analysis is. Publishing houses, so they are a key player in the field, but those are commercial companies. In case they are not subsidized by the government, they try to charge their revenue from scientists. And sometimes the revenue is more than the real interest of a scientific community. And uh, as a real company, they would like to increase their revenue at, at the cost of scientists. Uh, next is translation. To, today, the common language is used in science is English. 100 years ago, it was German. 200 years ago, it was French. Uh, so, uh, 1,000 years ago, it was Greek, Roman, etc., etc. So, with the evolution of the society, of public society, it may change. What we may have today, we have digital tools which could empower immediate interpretation from one language to another. And sometimes the person who doesn't know English, but he is producing a knowledge in his uh, na native English, could be read in different countries, not being necessarily translated in, and published in English. This is the advantage of digital tool, and we would like uh, our system to be empowered by this. It creates a big business for companies who are producing this uh, instrument of uh, translation, online translation, uh, and they are very much welcome to be our partners, as well as the storing uh, companies, storing devices, and uh, analytical company. So, with that, uh, this is the uh, idea of the system. Uh, I insist again, the organization which I am uh, in chair uh, is, does not belong to any country. So what is in the middle, uh, after any information comes to our repositories, it, doesn't, uh, it will not become an asset of any particular country. It's still the asset of this country, of this particular institution, and of this particular nation. The only uh, thing we do, we help to disseminate this information for those who really require this information. <clears throat> and we would like to help the one who is searching for information to access necessary information in his field. Uh, you, as a scientist, you all know that the first stage of any research activity is searching for available information. The better you do the search, the better you identify what is already done, it will help you at the later stage to produce good quality of scientific data and information. So this is the objective, to produce, to increase quality of stored information and to access, uh, enrich the capacity of scientists to be able to read what is already developed. Not only published, but developed and stored. So those are tablets which explain a little bit how this system should work for technical specialists. And this is the end of my presentation with the invitation to think, to discuss, and to do with us what might be of a very big help for global scientific community. Thank you for your kind attention, and thank you, Chair, for giving me a floor and the opportunity to speak in front of this distinguished audience. Thank you, Ma. Oh, sorry, Jenny. We have.